Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to talk about an application uh, which is not uh, automation friendly. And we're going to see how we can handle this with Git. So I'm using a sample application, the link of which I will provide in the description section. So uh, we have three buttons and we have a table. Um, now the problem with this kind of an application is, if I inspect and show you the dome, uh, the the IDs of these buttons are dynamic in nature. To understand this, uh, if we if we note the ID of the first one, uh, and if I refresh this, you see the ID has changed. Okay. Also, the text is uh, not constant. So even if I refresh this again the text of these uh, buttons are changing. So this is one problem where we cannot use the text as an identifier uh, and also the IDs are uh, as an identifier. Um, so we will see how we can handle this with kits. The second part of this page shows a table which also do not have a very well-defined uh, uh, identifier. Uh, but the good thing is we can use the text uh, from the cells to identify the element. We can store the text um, in the data sheet or we can even add assertions using kits. We will see how. But if we have a situation where we have to edit uh, the fifth row, right, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, the fifth row, edit the fifth row and delete the sixth row, right, which has the number five appended to it, uh, then how will we do this? So the very first instinct that we should have is to record. And let's see what happens if we record this. So we are going to create a new scenario. I'm going to name it as challenging dome. And there um, I will add a test case by the name of TC1. Yeah. So if you start recording, green R, right click, open. So that opens the browser for us. Um, let me just quickly close this um, dome and we're going to click on the bar. We're going to click on um, the second button and then the third button. Yeah. So the clicks are captured. We are also going to uh, click on um, the edit next to the uh, fifth row as we were discussing. Yeah, this is captured. And we are going to click on the delete next to the sixth row, as we were discussing. So this is also captured, right? Um, what we can also do is we can also take uh, we can take one of these cells uh, and then uh, store the value in the data sheet, right? So uh, we can do this. So a normal click will not work. This is not a button or a hyperlink that a click will be registered. So you won't find anything uh, in the test canvas. What you can do is right click, go to the extension, go to other and just simply say add element. Yeah, so this will just add the element and would capture a dummy click, right? So this is fine um, um, and if I save it, I need to remove this. That's it. Now, once I have done this, uh, it has captured the name of the page. Uh, that is a little weird. So I'll just change it to challenging dome. Yeah, this is more uh, reasonable. Now, let's see whether the uh, record is uh, successful enough to uniquely identify this
dome ele- these dome elements which are ever changing in nature to do that we will open the heal uh, feature go to the application click on the extension so now it's healing uh, now if i expand the page and then click on the page it shows the three uh, buttons which were recorded uh, as green that means it has been uniquely able to identify these uh, the pink ones are like there are multiple possibilities or multiple existences of these kinds of elements on the screen uh, which is indeed the case uh, so now let us also verify whether uh, the the three buttons that it uh, you know identified are uh, okay or not yeah okay in the sense that whether it is uh, actually green that means it's actually pointing to the first one or not the foo is pointing to the second one or not and the bar one is pointing to the third one or not okay so if i click on bar it is pointing to the first one if i click on foo it is pointing to the second one if i click on bar one it is pointing to the first one instead of the third one so we see there is a problem uh it it is not uniquely able to identify these elements so now what we have to do is we have to make certain alterations in the object repository in a way that we are able to uniquely identify these elements okay so uh if i go to the tool and if i open the first one bar i see that it has captured this id now this id as we discussed is dynamic in nature so i do not need the id i'm going to delete it i see there is a text link text that is also ever changing so that is also not required so i'm going to delete it and the relative x path is also using the text also unreliable and we're going to delete it okay so let's rename this as button 1 yeah the second one the same story with the second one the id the link text and the relative x path which depends on the text are all dynamic in nature we don't need it we are going to delete it but we do see that the x path is okay and the x path is pointing to the second index that is the second button uh we are going to rename this to button 2 and the third one same story delete the id link text and relative x path and we're going to rename this to button 3 now if we do the heal again and go to the application so if we click on button 1 it is pointing to the first button if we click on button 2 it is pointing to the second if we click on button 3 it is pointing to the third and all these three buttons are in green that is unique identification let's refresh this url and even then uh the button 3 is perfectly identified button 2 is identified and button 1 is identified right so that takes care of the three buttons now we want to identify uh the edit right but we want to identify the edit not for the first row but as we uh thought we have to identify it for the fourth row and the delete also not for the first row but to identify it for the fifth row right corresponding to the um uh, number 4 okay so what we will do is in this case we are going to change the x path of these edit buttons and the delete buttons and make it dependent on one of the texts in these um in the row actually so for the edit to be clicked for the fourth row what we just need to do is grab a text let's say this one okay and go to the tool and then say edit 
go to edit and now here we are going to change whatever we see in the screen on the screen we are going to write an xpath okay first we need to test the xpath properly inspect so that's a td so all we need to do is write a very short xpath slash slash td with a text which is equal to this that's it it uniquely identifies the td and then we are going to use the concept of following following and then we are going to say okay i want to click on the edit button right which is which is an anchor basically so following a um, well, there are two types of a's one is an edit the one uh, the other one is a delete so a with a text equal to edit so now it is uniquely identifying the edit but after this after uh, this cell the following edits there are many edits it actually tells us there are seven edits but i need the first one so i'm just going to say one so now this uniquely points me to this edit yeah so this is uh, this is a very simple expert that that i wrote to identify the edit button corresponding to a particular row uh, which is identified by a text in the cell so this is the fourth row edit now we are going to identify the fifth row delete same concept pick up the text you can use a different text so I'm going to use maybe this text and and not edit this time but delete and you see based on this text the delete is highlighted uh, one of one all right now if we come back to this delete button we're going to delete all of these enter the x path as we created yeah so that's about it that's about it now if we do a heal Go to the application, heal, close the console, click on the page. All of these are uniquely identified. So if I click on button one, it is the first button, button two, second button, button three, third button. Edit belongs to the fourth row as we wanted delete becomes corresp uh, delete is corresponding to the fifth row and if we reload the page and then do the spying again it is the same the first button second button third button edit belongs to the fourth row delete becomes available for the fifth row it's pretty consistent um, so if we have to um run this test we just need to add one more line browser a dynamic wait wait for page loaded this will open up this application wait for the page to load and then it will start clicking on these but clicking will be way too fast and we will not be able to identify what is happening so we will just use another syntax called highlight this will highlight um, all the elements um, during the execution okay i'm going to put a breakpoint here because i want this to run in a debug mode i don't want the execution to go very fast then we will not understand what is happening select the browser as chrome and let's give it a go yeah you see if i open the console it launches it 
waits for the page to be loaded then each of these elements are highlighted the the red uh, rectangles that you see against these elements are highlights by the tool so the tool has been uniquely able to identify elements uh, from uh, the dome uh, three of them were uh, because we uh, removed some dynamic properties captured by the tool during recording and two of them were due to uh, some xpath that we have created uh, which are dependent on a text i hope you find this informative um, i'll see you all in the next video